right, we are back for another painting video. And today, in what is hopefully the first of many Leviathan model-based painting videos, uh, I will be painting one of the new Termagants from the Leviathan box set, the new set for Warhammer 40k 10th edition. And I'm going to be painting him in a custom scheme. It does share a couple colors with some of the official Hive Fleets, but not a, this won't be an actual official Hive Fleet. So we're going to start off more ter with Mortarian Grime. And uh, this is going to be a kind of 90% contrast-based um, paint job. Uh, there will be a couple layer paints we use towards the end. But for now, it will be all contrast. So with this Mortarian Grime, I'm just going to coat the entire miniature with this. Um, we are going to come and put a different color on the armor plates. So technically you wouldn't have to cover the armor plates with this uh, with this first color, but I kind of like the idea of it being under there and it might tint the next colors just ever so slightly and kind of unify the look of, uh, of this guy. And you might be able to see there's a little bit of blue and pink in there. Um, I had started or I painted this guy once before with a different scheme. Ended up not really liking it, so I reprimed him. So there might be a little bit of other colors poking through, but that's okay. He'll he'll be one out of twenty miniatures eventually that uh will all look relatively the same, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Uh the only thing you really need to be mindful of is these he has these little gaps in his skin here. And you just need to make sure that the Mortarian Grime, or whatever color you're using, gets in those so you don't have these bright white points of primer on your finished miniature. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this, but this miniature was primed with Wraithbone Spray from Games Workshop. So I'm going to let this completely dry, and then we will come back and do the next color. All right, we are back, and our Mortarian Grime is all dry. Now we're going to move on to Luxion Purple, and this is going to be for the armor plates on this guy. Um, and these Termagants have what look like armor plates um, on the gun as well. Let me get my brush a little bit wet here. Um, they've got armor plates on the top of the gun here. Um, I am not going to do those in this color. I'm going to do them in the same color as the nails and uh, claws. Of this guy. You could, however, if you wanted, keep the armor color for them as well. Um, I believe I decided to do that after seeing the some of the GW official ones that do the same thing. So I'm just going to cover the armor here, making sure it gets on all the cracks and crevices and doesn't pool too heavily on the surface. And I'm gonna just get those two little pieces of armor there. All right. And then he's got some armor coming down the side here. And then that is it for this side. I will do the other side of him, and then I'll wait for that purple to dry, and then we'll come back and do the next color. All right, we're back, and our purple is all nice and dry. And now we're going to move on to Fire Slayer Flesh, and that's going to be for all the little joints and stuff on him, as well as the cables that are attaching to his guns and stuff like that. Oh, and the inside of his mouth, which I'll start with. So I'm just going to get his tongue and kind of up into his teeth for his gums and stuff. And then all these little little spots on his skin and on the gun. Basically anything that's indented, I'm just going to do in this color. And if it goes over a little bit, not the end of the world, it's a very thin contrast color. And so it will uh, it'll just kind of blend in and be fine. So this little bone skin, whatever it is here that's protruding. I'm going to grab that. 
and then all these little bits here his neck because that is like a sort of a the soft underbelly I guess you'd say I'm not exactly sure the makeup of a Necron or a Necron a Tyranid um, it sort of seems like they have three materials this hard chitin armor or chitan however you want to pronounce it um, chitin 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 whatever um, then they have like this sort of exoskeleton sort of thing and then they have the soft fleshy bits underneath so the soft fleshy bits are what we're going for with this color so that appears to be all of them on this side of the miniature i will do the other side and then we'll come back and do the next color all right we are back and our fire slayer flesh is all nice and dry so now we're going to move on to our first non-contrast paint that's going to be Black Pudding from the D&D Prism Prismatic Paint line. Um, I really like this black. It's sort of a just leaning towards gray, kind of a, a warm black. Um, I just really like it. Um, and it works exceptionally well for something like this that is sort of a, a living creature, but also very dark black. So I'm going to get the armor panels on the gun in this color. I'm going to get all the little claws on this guy. He's got two there on the gun. And, of course, he has the two on these middle set of legs. Or maybe arms. And then he's got both hooves and claws on his back legs. Or on his legs, if those other things are arms. And the only thing to really be careful of is on these hooves, they've got a little bit of the uh, exoskeleton sticking down onto them. So I just paint around those, being careful. And then get this back one as well. And then the only other thing in this color is going to be his eyes. Just get that hoof real quick. And then, just being very careful, come in and get the eyes. Probably not as careful as I could have been, but that's okay. So I'm just going to paint that other armor panel, uh, the reverse side of him, all the, all the black. And then I'll let that dry. We'll come back and we'll start the highlighting process. Alrighty, we are back, and our black is pretty much dry. Um, and I forgot to mention uh, last time uh, that you could, if you wanted, if you wanted to keep this all contrast, you could just use black Templar as a replacement for the black pudding that I used, and it would be quite simple. Um, there's no no reason I'm not using contrast paint in this, other than I just really like the color of black pudding. So you could keep this all contrast paint. Use Black Templar or Black Legion if you wanted to, um, to do all the, the black bits here. And then honestly, you put him on a base and you could call him done. Um, absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you were trying to paint a bunch of them for a game and you just need to get them done, these would look just fine and you could roll out. But if you want to go a little bit further, we're going to. So I'm going to take some fairy dragon wings from the D&D Prismatic Paint line again. And we're going to highlight the armor panels with this. So I'll just get a little bit out on my palette here. Get a tiny brush. And then I'm just going to get, get some on the brush. And then we're going to start at the, the outside, basically, of each armor panel. So if we're looking at this armor panel right here, we're going to start at the outside edge. And we're just going to drag the brush in like this. And you can go as far into the armor panel or as shallow on the armor panel as you want. I'm probably going about halfway or so. Um, it's up to you. Some of them will be longer. Some of them will be shorter. Just coming in like that. And get this side here. And we're just going to do this all the way down. 
And this doesn't have to be perfect. There are people who will meticulously paint these uh, these armor lines on their on their tyranids. I am not one of those people. I'm just trying to get it done and make it look cool from three feet away. So I'll just go around like that and like that. And of course, not everyone is going to be painting their tyranids in tan and purple um and so you can replicate this paint job really with any color um my recommendation would be to if you replace the neutral or rather replace the mortarian grime with some sort of neutral color maybe a paler color and then have your vibrant color be your armor um, i think that looks the best personally um and then of course you just change your highlight colors based on whatever colors you choose. So that's the armor done, as you can see there. Um, when you get really up close, they're kind of messy, but that's okay. From three feet away on the gaming table, they'll look just fine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the other side off camera, and then we'll come back and highlight the black. Alrighty, we are back, and our purple highlights are all done. Now we're going to move on to highlighting the black armor panels on his gun, and for that, we're going to use Myconid Spore, again, from the DMD Prismatic Paint line. Um, no real reason I'm using these in particular. We got them in at my local game store, and I just picked them up because they were cheap, just to see how they are, and uh, I'm really liking them. But, of course, you could use Games Workshop Paint or Army Painter Paint or pretty much any paint for this kind of stuff. We're not doing any high-end technical paint jobs here. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Just kind of find the ends of the armor panels and drag my brush in. Um, on these, just because they're going to stick out a little bit more, I am trying to vary the uh, the length of the of the lines coming in, just to make it look a little more haphazard and biological as opposed to a, an actual pattern. Um, and I'll do the same on the other side here. here as well and that'll do you could also do it on the hooves and the claws if you want i'm not going to i'm just going to leave it like this um, but i am going to highlight the teeth with this color um on my test model i thought maybe this color was a little too close to the skin color to highlight the teeth but again i'm not super worried about it i think from three feet looking at my test one I did, you can tell the teeth are highlighted, and that's really all that matters to me. So then, the last step we're going to do, obviously before the base, I'm going to take some sun yellow, but of course any yellow will work. I'm just using sun yellow. Get a little bit of a, on my palette here. And then I'm just going to come in and do a little dot on the eyes. Um, you could do tyranid eyes in a variety of ways. I do mine with just a dot, like that. Um, but you could do a slit um, in the direction of the eye. You could also do a vertical slit um, to make them look sort of snake-like. Um, but I personally, I'm going to have too much paint on my brush, uh, am going to just do a little dot. It's just like that. And with that, he is finished. Well, aside from the base, of course which right about now you should be seeing him on a base and some nice pictures of him, at least I hope. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said at the beginning, I hope this is the first of many videos of the Leviathan box set. I have it all sitting right next to me, all assembled, ready to go. So uh, we shall see. Um, this was not given to me by Games Workshop. I forgot to mention that in the beginning. Um, this is before the release date, so I don't want there to be any confusion. Um, this is my friendly local game store store copy that I'm painting up so we can have it on display on release day. But thank you everybody for watching. If you enjoy this, if you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next one.